good morning you are blessed you're highly favored you are loved of god uh when we come back we're going to share the word stay tuned after the break with you is prophetess Miringa Sansuli. well child of god welcome back today we're going to share about sonship well one who asks themselves why sonship why do you have to share about sonship but i was led in that direction this will help you have dominion in life open your bibles uh in ephesians chapter 1 from verse 5 to verse 6 i hope you've called someone i hope you have your notebook I hope you have your bible and you are ready to receive of god you have your bible you're in ephesians okay let us read the word then we'll pray over the word ephesians chapter 1 from verse 5 to verse 6 having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. So let us humble ourselves and pray over the word. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you because we understand your word this morning. Lord, I pray for everyone that's watching that they will receive this word with gladness, that this word will work in them in the mighty name of Jesus. We have prayed and believed. Amen. Now, open your, open your hearts to understand something. What, who is the son? Of course, physically, you know you have a father, right? You have a father, you have a mother, or you may not have had a, no, a father or a mother, but you are a product of a father and a mother. So, uh, what does it mean to be predestined? Predestinated. In other words, before you actually thought, before you actually knew, he knew. And he planned it all out way before. Well, some people keep on asking, why, 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 why am I on earth? Well, you're on earth because God had you in mind. You're not an accident. He pre-planned you that on a day such as this, you'd be watching. On a day such as this, You'd be where you are, child of God. So let's go step by step from verse, verse 5. Yes, the Bible says, Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. So when Jesus Christ came, he paid the ultimate price. Jesus Christ was predestined to die for us on the cross. He is the firstborn from the dead. He is our bigger brother. But he is our Lord and our King according to the good pleasure of his will. So you were predestined, you were pre-planned. Someone talked about uh, really pre-planned, yes. He foreknew you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. And to make it even much sweeter, I mean, whenever I look at, look at the word and know that, you know, I'm a son of God, sonship, I belong to God. Don't put gender, female, or male, the Bible is saying sonship. So we'll say, sonship. So um, let's go further. Let's go further into this word to be able to understand. So it's to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. So it's by his grace that we have been accepted, child of God. So we're going to go further into the word. Open your Bible, Father, in Romans chapter 8. 14 to 16. The Bible says, for ye, for, from 14 to, 14 to 16, the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Do you get me, child of God? The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, I'll read it again. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Question is, are you willing to be led of the spirit of god by the spirit of god are you willing to listen to everything he has to say are you willing to take him by his word are you willing to lay down your priorities to take up his priorities let's continue verse 15 for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. 
why would God make ensure by his spirit that as they were interpreting the Bible from, that, that this Romans from Greek and Aramaic to English, the word Abba could not change. Abba, if you study the root word Abba, you said, Daddy, Daddy, Father. So when you're going, Abba, you're like, Daddy, Father. So he's your daddy, he's your father. He is your God, he is your king. Yes, you know, sometimes we, we are in the Old Testament. We think God, whatever we do, God is there to strike us. We think that whatever God is there, the, the ground is going to swallow us up because we did something wrong. I remember when I was younger, I would do something and uh, I hit my stone. I said, I, I think God is punishing me. I did not know God as Abba. So some people are still at that place where they do not know God as Abba. They don't feel adopted. They don't know they're adopted. They don't act as sons. They act as servants. Because servants don't have as much right. But sons have access. Sons have right. That's why I said Jesus made the way. He made the way. He, he opened up. He recon God came in Christ to reconcile us back to himself. As a son, that is why the Bible says you are born of God. You are born of the incorruptible seed. Who is Jesus? Now this word, when, this, when I hear this word, I realize that, yes, we know him as Elohim. In Genesis, you get to say he's Elohim. Elohim just comes and says, he creates the all-knowing God, the mighty God. The, you know, then you said uh, Yahweh. They used to call him Yahweh, the covenant-keeping God. But now you see, he's, he's now Abba. You know, some people still think we are in the Old Testament. Some people still think that, you know, God is there to punish you so you before you're always conscious you think your your god your abba father your daddy father your daddy god is um like maybe you ask the father who maybe may have abused you emotionally or physically child of god god came in christ to to reconcile you back unto himself god is not angry with you all the anger all the agony all those things that you think would have blocked you from God hearing you, why they were put on Christ. That is why he died. He was made naked because of this. Child of God. He was beaten because of this. That now you will be reconciled. He actually laid down all he had. Our Lord and our King laid down all he had just that you might be reconciled back and to the Father God. So wherever you are, do not be there thinking that, you know what, uh, can God really hear me? You're his son. You belong to him, child of God. He's a covenant-keeping God. He is not man that you should lie. Neither is he human that you should change his mind. You're not there to say, you know what, I love you today, next to tomorrow I don't love you. I love you today, tomorrow I don't love you. God is love. So wherever you are, and you're like, you know, sometimes you're at a place where so you're like, you know what, God, do I really belong in the kingdom? I've met people who think that them, whatever they have done is too big for God to forgive them. What is too big? What did Jesus die for? I look at that person who's out there who feels, you know what, I've taken drugs all my life. Can I really be accepted? Well, why did you, why did Jesus Christ die on the cross for you that you might be reconciled unto God? So wherever you are, maybe you have you, you say, you know what, I've mis misused my body. So Jesus became he who knew no sin became sin. He became that very sin, that very thing. He did not become a sinner. He became that sin. He became the prostitution, that very substance, that drug abuse, alcoholism. Some people out there are struggling. You're actually trying to be good. Stop trying to be good. Let God work on you. Go to daddy, tell him, daddy, this is it. But you see, daddy, you let, your, 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 my, your son lay down his life. But daddy, my body is failing me. You see, God calls you the perfection of the beauty in Zion. When he tells the perfection in Zion, it is not complete without us. That is why Jesus had to die. The second Adam had to come. That you will now have a place of adoption. This is what makes me sing. 
It makes me dance. It makes me forget all those things. It makes me confident. The when I approach him, I know he's listening. My big brother, my lord, my king, paid the ultimate price. So I don't know what you may be struggling with. You may be struggling with uh, pornography and you're like, you know what? Even if I try, well, 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 stop trying. What did Jesus die for? Accept that he died for you. Accept that he is Lord. That sin will bow. It's simple. I have met people who are saying, oh, drugs, drugs. One time someone told me, oh, my son, drugs, drugs. I said, don't worry. Don't worry. Just wait. And the next day, the person called me, hey, I cannot believe my son is in the, my son is sober. It took, in fact, the parents had never called me again because the son has never got the drug issue again. But what happened? I had to, in, you know, righteousness is imputed, so I had to speak words with grace, with love. Child of God. Some people out there and you think God is angry with you, that's why you're going through what you're going through. No. Many times we are the manufacturers and we tend to think, maybe I, I don't belong to the kingdom. Well, you do. To God, if it were possible, everyone would have accepted him. But you know, he's given us what they call will. That's why you believe with your heart and with your mouth you confess unto salvation. You confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. Some people think, they're like, you know, if we have, they think, uh, Daddy God, our father is like their father, one they were used to hear. Some people have those pictures. So approaching God is a completely different picture, child of God. You know, they have this picture that, you know, when their father would come and they just hear either a hoot or a knock, everyone's campers for safety. Either scampering to the bedroom, scampering to the shower. God is not like that. He's a loving God. He desires to relate with you as a son. And once you accept that you are a son, you begin to enjoy the benefits of sonship. Let's go further into the word. Child of God, we are still moving further into the word. So open your Bible further in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, For ye are all children, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That's why you say, I am a, I am a friend of, not just a friend, you are a son of God. Now some people are still at that place where they are, they are borrowing location. No. This was paid. Begin to just accept the Lord Jesus. You'll be introduced into that place of sonship. It is free. Salvation is free, child of God. That access is free. You don't need to look for a prophet to access God. You can get onto your knees in the name of Jesus. You, you don't have to look for so and so to have access to God. You can relate with God personally. Do not think God does not hear you. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So some people think and so they are. So who says God is not hearing you? In any case, you when you're sleeping, I always give an example. When you're sleeping, do you watch over yourself? How many have woken up with cockroaches in their mouth if they have cookies in their house? How many of them have, have do you even know how many hair you have on your hair? We don't even count them as hair. Strands of hair you have on your hair. Do you even know how many liters of sweat you, you excrete every day? So why should you be bothered about the things that you see physically that you can actually see and say this is the issue? So this morning, I'm here to encourage you. As a child of God, why do you have to worry? Do birds actually worry while they will see for it? How far more you, who is made in the image of God, who carries the presence of God, in whom God lives, and in you, you also live in God, because in him you live, in him you move, in him you have entire being. Let's start with you. God is not angry with you. All the anger was put on Jesus. So we're getting further into the word. Um, Galatians chapter 4, from verse 6 to verse 7. I hope you're with me. You're following. Um, the Bible says, And as Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith 
the same as children of God. Let us show this again because it has to sink. Verse 6, even as Abraham, some people say, we used to sing in Sunday school, those, all those who still go with their children in Sunday school. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons. But are you persuaded that you, that is your lineage? Because the lineage is of faith. Every bit of faith is of grace. Child of God. So Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. You cannot work your way up to be righteous. In any case, our righteousness is like a filthy rag. Before him. That is why righteousness, the Bible says, blessed is the man and to whom righteousness is imputed. Child of God. Wherever you are, know you're special and God is hearing you. Let me ask you, how do you identify someone? You, does someone get a leg up to take a picture and they put on their ID? They use their face. You identify someone by their face and then or their head or their DNA. That's why you see when there is an issue, what do they use? DNA to prove. Now, wherever you are, even if you cut through, you're in the spirit world, your DNA is of God. Because you're born of God. Even if they, you're, once you're born again, your, your line it changes. Your DNA is of God. You are a son of God. You are a co-worker with God. You are a co-heir with I, I wish I wish you'd get me. I wish you'd realize that these things have been given to us. You'd begin to enjoy the place of dominion. You'd begin to experience these things. Now, if I was also telling you, do you identify someone using a leg? You use the head. That's the other is they'll be putting the leg and they put the name, so and so. But they use the face. Now Christ is the head. We are the body. We are together in this, child of God. We are together with God in this. We are his offspring. The Bible says, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our entire being. As it has been said by some of the poets, we are his offspring. Wherever you are, remember this clearly. You are born of God. You are the offspring of God. I don't care what anyone has said. I don't care whether you've gained weight or lost weight. I don't care if you're short or tall. I don't care if you're light or dark. I don't care if everyone says you are gone cares. I don't care. The Bible says what the Bible says that Jesus paid the ultimate price. And now you have access. Someone out there just say you have access to this thing. Why do you have to worry when you, your father holds, your father owns eternity? Abba Father owns eternity. Daddy God, Daddy, ah yeah, Daddy Father, he owns eternity. What do you have to do? Take up your position as a son of God. Let's go further into the scripture. John, First John, First John, chapter three. And verse 7, what does the Bible say? Little children, let no man, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So the question comes in, some people think that doing is about so much of your effort. Well, if it was so much of our effort, many of us, you know, by the law, if you broke one law, you've broken all of them. So that's why you see Christ is the fulfillment of that law. So once I look at Christ, he is my righteousness. He is the work of righteousness. He is my righteousness. He is my hiding place. Child of God. He is my redemption. He is your redemption. So whatever you're going through, just know you are free. But how will you enjoy this freedom in sonship? By knowing the truth. And the truth is Jesus. There is every other thing is a, the lie, is a, some are facts, I mean, the rest are lies. And facts keep changing, right? So, me as someone who has understood certain, certain things, even as a, because of fact, a practice of the law and everything, you get to understand something very uh, interesting. When Jesus paid the ultimate price, there was a judgment. 
Now, when the judgment was set, sin was dealt with. And that is where we now get that place of redemption. This is what you have to understand. You may forget everything, but remember this. You are a son of God. You are adopted. There is a judgment. Pop! There is a decree. Pop. You are declared that son, a son of God. And there was no appeal. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change your DNA. You simply have to accept the Lord Jesus. And he'll help you walk through the, the work of righteousness. We cannot do this on our own. That is why we have the Holy Spirit. To help us move in the path. To help us do the will of the Father. On our own we can't. Well, I speak to, today, I'm going to just pray for those ones who, yes, you've been born again, but you've been finding yourself backsliding. You get born again today, and then next time you're somewhere else, and then you're like, you know, I don't think being born again or being a child of God is meant for me. Well, being born again, be, being in the kingdom, being a son of God is meant for you. If it weren't meant for you, you would have said, it's for some people, salvation is for Salvation was he died for all of us, for all the sins, for yesterday's sins, today's sins, tomorrow's sins. There is nothing new under the earth that he did not die for. In any case, he's the beginning and the end. So wherever you are, remember that God loves you. God cares. Call someone who has been struggling with things. Today we're going to deal with that area. You've been struggling with, uh, maybe say, a habit. Maybe you're, you're at a place where you feel you're... You, 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 you have addiction, you don't have addiction from today. At the sound of my voice, you are separated from every form of addiction in the mighty name of Jesus. So when we come back, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to accept Jesus Christ. If you're going, you have an issue, just mention that issue. God is hearing you. You are a child of God. Well, welcome back. We're going to pray. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, say, Father, I give you my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I accept Jesus in my heart. I belong to you. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed and believed. Amen. So I want to pray for you to be preserved. Father, Lord, I thank you because you preserve those that have prayed this prayer, Lord. I thank you because you guide their footsteps. Thank you, Lord, because you help them in all things. In Jesus' mighty name. You're out there, you look for the nearest church, one that has the word, the pure word of God, and you will go. Now, I'm going to just pray for those. You're having, you've been having issues of addiction. Well, you've been having... You can even call someone, you, you have a, a, a case, if you, would you say it's impossible to man? Today, the grace of God is going to be revealed. As I see, as I saw a see there's someone here who has um, a back ache. Yeah? A back ache. Just check your back, check your, check your legs, check your head, check your, because I just see healing released to you guys. Um, I'm also going to, you have an addiction in the mighty name of Jesus. You are free from the addiction. I decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the place of sonship in Jesus' mighty name. You are at a place where maybe you have tried jobs, you enter this job, it fails, you enter this job, it fails, you enter this job, it fails. Well, today is the end of that story, of that cycle. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that has been standing in the way of your children is, is cancelled. And I decree that they're set free in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare a blessing upon the, the, the viewers. I decree and declare that they enjoy the benefits of salvation. I decree and declare that they hunger for your word in the mighty name of Jesus. This word is revealed to them. This word works in them. This word stirs them up in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, they enjoy their week. They enjoy their day. They enjoy their families. In the mighty name of Jesus, they are blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Wherever you are, it is done. It is done. You are blessed and highly favored. Enjoy this fruitful week. Enjoy this fruitful day. 
remember you are a son of God and God is mindful of you. Stay tuned.